Allah said in the Quran, وَأَنزَلَ التَّرَاتَ وَالْإِنْجِيلِ And he, God, revealed the Torah to Moses. And he revealed the Injil or the Gospel to Jesus. These are the scriptures. These are the legitimate uh, revelation that was given to these prophets yes. from, from, from mankind. So we believe in God. We believe in his angels. We believe in these prophets. We believe in uh, the scriptures that they brought. And we believe, very importantly, that I got to tell you this, Eddie. I want to tell you this. Go ahead. One day, you're going to die. That's a reality. It's a reality. And your loved one's going to die. Everyone's going on a trip. You're going on a trip. One way ticket. Yeah. All right. You ain't coming back. You ain't coming back, right? All the money, houses, you're leaving behind. Leave behind. Well, let me say what Allah said in Quran. Kullu nafsin da'ikatul maut. It's a verbatim word of God. Word of God. Every soul shall taste of death. So we're going to die. But, 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 is that the end? No. We believe in the resurrection. And therefore, one of the fundamental beliefs, articles of belief, is that after we die, on the day of judgment, God will raise, resurrect everybody, everybody ever lived. Now, you have any idea how many people ever lived altogether? No, billions and billion. I don't know. Right now, you know how many people on earth? A little more than six billion. Six billion. According to some scientists, they say from the beginning of time, there have been maybe up to 100 billion people. That's a lot of people. A lot of folk, right? All coming up from there. All coming up, man. I mean, <laughs> I mean, and God is going to judge all of them. It'll be scales, huh? It's going to be scales of justice. So as a Muslim, we have to believe in that. And there's one more that becomes a little bit complicated, but I'm going to just touch on it for a minute. Yeah. And the, the other article of faith is Muslims believe in what is called the Qadr, the Qadr of Allah. What does that mean? That means that anything that happens, it's already written in a book God knows about it, even before it takes place. Uh, there is an interesting verse in Quran, the Word of God. وَمَا كَانَ لِنَفْسِنَا تَمُوتَ إِلَى بِإِذْنِ اللَّهِ كِتَابٍ مُؤَجَّلًا And no uh, uh, soul can die except by the permission of Allah. It is already written in a book. Martin Luther King, uh, Martin Luther King was assassinated in 1968. Before he was born, it was known that the day he would die. Malcolm X and Haj Malik Shabazz was assass assassinated in 1965. Before he died, it was already written. That's the Qadr. That's the, that's the Qadr. That no matter what happens, as a Muslim, we accept the Qadr of Allah. Don't misunderstand us. We work hard. We try to change our fate. We try to do everything that we can. Once we make every kind of effort, and we leave it in the hands of God, and whatever happens, we realize that it could not have passed us by. It was already written in a book. Therefore, we accept our fate. We accept our destiny. It's called the Qadr. It's, I mean, it's a bit more complicated than that, but that is in its simple, simple terms. This is the faith of the Muslim. Yeah. Now let me tell you some of the things we have to do. Um, if, you, if you notice in this conference, you saw all these Muslims, and perhaps the largest session was prayer. Muslims have to pray five times a day, but how do we pray? Our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him, which is the last Prophet, said, Pray as you see me pray. So Muslims pray five times a day. And the first prayer is actually before sunrise. It's called the dawn prayer. Salatu. Prayer of Fajr. Dawn prayer. And then the afternoon, like 1 o'clock, 1, 1 1.30. And then midday, around uh, 5, 5.30, something like that. Then the sunset. And then maybe one one hour and a half after the sunset. Just basically dialing up, prayer. thanking the Creator there, for everything you got. Your there, eyes, there, your ears, there everything. It is. You, you got it. You yeah. said it. So now, tell us, is there anything you want to add to this? No, except for you got the last question. That's the only thing I want to add to Yeah, that. a couple more questions. Tell us now, how does someone benefit in this life and in the hereafter from Islam, from being a Muslim? Oh, oh man. Uh, I, I, I just quote a hadith that the Prophet said. That's a saying of the last and final messenger to mankind, the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. He said that God said, Ya ibadi, kulukum dolun illa man hadaytuhu fastahduni ahdikum. All my servants, every one of you are misguided. Every one of you, unless 
I guide you. Therefore, ask me and I will guide you. What are we misguided about? I'll give a couple examples. The foods we eat. We, some things Allah made prohibited. A few things, like for instance, every prophet that came told their people not to eat pork. Every one of them, including Jesus and Moses and Muhammad. So we, we, we are, you know, some things is prohibited and the pork is a dirty animal that's not uh, permitted for human consumption. So we don't eat pork. We don't drink alcohol in no form. No beer, no champagne, no, no none of that. Yeah. No reefer, no cocaine. All the things that are bad for you anyway. They're bad for you anyway. Yeah. We found out that God made all of these things prohibited because they're bad for us, they hurt us. Um, so I, I benefit as a, as a Muslim just in terms of my diet. Um, Muslims, uh, they, they look wonderful, they're, they're healthy because they, 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 they follow the strict diet. How about the contentment in addition and the to peace? That, in addition to that, because we're doing all of these things, we have this belief and we're doing all this prayer is actually making us uh, humble, humbling ourselves before the Creator. And, and one of the meanings of al-Islam is peace. Mm -hmm. from, from the word uh, aslama, which means to submit to God. And by submitting to God, then we have peace within and peace without. That money can't buy. Money cannot buy. You can't, you can't get that. Can't, only through God. Let me tell you why. Because if you can only get it through money, then all the rich people, they will have it, and poor people will have none of it. Tell us about this paradise now that we're, we're aiming for. Oh man, that's what it's all that's about. That's the goal, the eternal the life. The goal is, after we die, that somehow God is going to raise us up again. But wait, how God going to raise us up again? Well, the same God that gave us life the first time is going to give us life again. And He's going to bring us and give us life again, and then He's going to judge us. And there's two places. There's no third place. Either you will be judged and God give you mercy, and you will go to eternal bliss. Same way the Christians and Jews believe, that there will be a place of no pain, no death, none of that, no, no poverty like we have now, none of that. And if God judges you and punishes you, he can send you to the hellfire, what's called hell, where there's punishment. The beautiful thing about it is that not everyone will stay in hellfire. Some, through God's mercy, will be taken out of the hellfire after being there for a period of time, and God will take them out and put them in, in the paradise. But there are some people that will never come out of paradise. And who are those? And, hey, hey, I'm not the judge. God's, God's the judge. judgment. Let me tell you what he said. Yeah. In the Quran. That's God speaking. It's God. It's not me. It's not, it's not you. It's not me. Not Eddie. Not me. Not Saraj. Not, we it, just conveying the message. We just conveying the message that God can forgive any crime. He said there's one thing he will never forgive. Only one thing. And that is the worst sin that you can commit. The worst sin that you can commit in Arabic is called shirk. And that is associating gods with God. If you die associating gods with God, then there's no way out, no way out for you it's, from this. It's locked itself. up forever. It's, it's light, forever. life sentence. And, and throw away the king. So if you set up rivals of God, you set up partners of God, you pray to anyone else, intermer inter intermediaries, it's finished. Worst thing you can do is finish. Worst thing you can do. Because, because, the, because the primary message that every prophet came with is this absolute oneness of God. But God is the most merciful. He can forgive. He's the most merciful. Or he can punish. He can do what he, say, he says in the Quran. It's a very interesting verse. وَعَلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ شَدِيدُ الْإِقَابِ وَأَنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُرُ الرَّحِيمِ You better know that God is strong in punishing on the one hand. But on the other hand, he's merciful and forgiven. Now, it's up to him. It's up to him. I, I, there was an example in history of a man who killed a hundred people. A hundred people, imagine, murdered a hundred people. And because that man turned around and turned to God in repentance, God accepted his repentance. You see? So, um, he, he is so merciful that you can't even count his mercy. But on one issue, non-negotiable. Setting up partners with him, the worst thing you can do. Now you want to be Muslim. Now you've heard this, and you studied Islam, and now something hits you, and you know what? You're ready to submit, to surrender to who? To the Creator of the heavens and earth, none of His creation, to the Creator alone. One wants to be Muslim. 
What does he got to do? Go get baptized, dipped in a pool. How does he do this? How does he take this step? Very easy. All he has to do is announce there is no God but Allah. There is no God but the creator of the heavens and Allah. And Muhammad is his messenger. And Muhammad is the last and final messenger. If you say that, that's it. Now, you would think you want to go to a masjid to, to say it formally. You don't have to. You don't have to. You can get to any Muslim and say, listen, I want to become a Muslim. It's good to go to the masjid. Yeah. So you learn. Uh, but you don't have to technically just make that pronouncement. It's called shahada or witness. Because everybody's wondering what's going on. We're in a, we got a fireworks show going on behind us. So if you're at home and it's two in the morning and you're feeling like, man, you, you just you, you need that spiritual connection with your creator. This is it. It's simple. Simple. That's very simple. You're Muslim. Declare that none has the right to be worshipped except the creator of the heavens and the earth. Allah in the Arabic and Muhammad is the last and final messenger. There you go. In the Arabic, La ilaha illallah. <coughs> Muhammad the Rasulullah. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad the Rasulullah. That's simple. You're Muslim. Simple. Now you're Muslim. We got to come to a close in a few. Uh, concluding, tell us now for those Muslims who are Muslim and you have a real good tone, you go up and you go down, you get people motivated, man, they're missing the Salah, they're not connected, they have this beautiful way of life and some are taking advantage of it, you know, by not fulfilling their, their obligations. How do you get them to do the first step that's the most important step is the prayer. Give some encouragement, some advice, some... The last thing I want to say, Yeah. the last thing I want to say is that... Um, Sometimes, as Muslims, Christians, or Jews, religious people, we are negligent sometimes, yeah. and we don't do what we should do. Yeah, it happens to all of us. Sometimes it happens to some of us more than others. I think we're just lazy. Sometimes we're lazy, and we need to kind of shake ourselves up a little bit. But for us, um, see, God doesn't allow you to take Him for granted. Yeah. See, so He doesn't say to you, for instance, "Listen, pray to me." once a month, once a year. But pray to me every day, five times a day. Every day. And we need it. He if don't need person, it. He don't need it, absolutely. He doesn't need it at all. If all uh, 8 billion people on the earth and all 100 billion people ever live, if they refuse to worship him, that doesn't take away from his kingdom at all. It doesn't hurt him. It doesn't injure him at all. It is impossible. But what we do, it do it for us. And when we pray, we benefit. I always ask the question, cui bono, who benefits? And we benefit. So I would say to any Muslims who are struggling, be around other Muslims. And that helps to give us, give us uh, strength. Uh, our Prophet said, finally, he says, Al-marru al-dini khalili fayandur ahdukum man yukhalil. A person will follow the religion of a very close companion. Therefore, let every one of you be mindful of whom he shall choose as a friend. Be with good people. Good people. And you will do what good people do. Give some closing comments, advice. You got the audience. Shoot. I just did. I will say this again. Be with good people. Be with good people. Be in the company of good people. Siraj so Wahaj on the Dean Show. Be Thank you very for being with us. Salam alaikum. Allah, there's only one God, and Muhammad is his messenger. Allah, la ilaha illallah. Allah, there's only one God, and Jesus.